mass four, and that is um, differential equations. Let's get out of the way. Right, differential equation. Now, differential equations are the most important thing in engineering maths. Right, and what you'll do is you're touching on it this year, and then next year, and over the course of the, the, the time you're at uni, you will need to be able to deal with these extensively. Right, so it's exactly what you think. A differential equation equation is an equation with a derivative in it. Okay, so it's got a dy by dx. So first order is what we're going to look at in engineering maths four. Now in engineering maths five, we do a second order. Okay. So first order just means there's a dy by dx in it, right? So you've got only dy by dx, okay? I.e. you could have dy by dx plus 4y equals 9. That's a differential equation, first order, because you've got a dy by dx and it's got an equal sign in it. That's other stuff. Doesn't really matter, right? The variable is y, so it should stay as y. Now, it can be dy by dt as well. You could have something like this. You could have dy by dt plus 6y equals 10, right? So, can be divided by dx, divided by dt, anything. Now, you may also see it written as something like this. y dashed plus 4y equals 9. And y dashed, just remember, means divided by dx. And again, that would be y dashed. But I suppose that's y dashed of x and y of x. But hey, it doesn't really matter. Right, now... The thing that we're not doing here, but you'll go on and do in uni, we're going and do an engineering an math five. If you stay on and do HND with us next year, but I don't think any of you guys are going to. So you might see me call these F O D E's, first order differential equations. Equations. And these are called SOD, obviously. Right now, the thing that makes them different is that they've got a d squared y by dx in them. dx squared like that. So it's got a second order derivative. You can have something like this. d squared y by dx squared plus 6 dy by dx plus 9y equals 0. That's actually a really nice and easy differential equation to do, but you guys don't have to worry about that. Okay, so these are our differential equations here. Now, some of your most standard formulas, for example, force equals mass times acceleration is a differential equation because acce acceleration is dv by dt. So loads of these different things are differential equations without you realizing them. Right, and that's how we get a lot of the formulas that you use in engineering, specifically in me uh, mechanical engineering. Right, so first type is solving by direct integration. And you'll have done this in higher maths. Right, so... These will just look like dy by dx equals something to do with x, right? And you were you did this in higher maths without realizing that's what you were doing, 
Okay, so if you dy by dx, that has something to do with x. Then what we would do is we would integrate this side with respect to x, and we'd integrate this side with respect to x. So y would equal, because if you integrate dy by dx, you get y, the integral of f of x dx plus c. And then we can calculate c if we are given a coordinate on the function. Okay, and a coordinate on the function is known as the initial condition. Okay. Right, and that normally tells you something and it normally happens when x equals zero. Right, initial, what's happening initially. So we're given a coordinate when x equals 0. So I might say when x equals 0, y is 6. Right? When x equals 0, y is 9. When x equals 0, y equals 0. Now, if you have a second order differential equation, you'll have two initial conditions. But as I said, we don't have to worry about that this second. Right, example number one. My writing seems to be getting worse, but hey. What can you do? Example number one. Right, so we're going to find the particular solution to the differential equation. Now, the key thing about differential equations is this plus c term is really important. The constants in differential equations are really, really, really important. Right? Now, if you're left with an answer with a plus c in it, it's not called the particular solution, it's called the general solution because there's a constant term and a value in there you're not aware of. But we'll come to that later on. This is just me showing you the direct integration bit. Right, so we've got dy by dx equals 4x plus 3 and then your initial condition is now as I said it doesn't have to when x equals 0 I'm going to give you a different one here initial condition is when x equals 1 y equals Okay, there we go. Right, so we've got dy by dx equals a function of x. So that means it's in the correct format for us to do direct integration. So I integrate this side with respect to x, which means I integrate this side with respect to x. Okay, so integrate that side will just give me y. Integrate that, so that becomes 4x squared over 2, because you increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. 3 just becomes 3x, and we need a plus c. Right? And as I said before, that's your solution. Can we simplify it? Yes, we can. So that's y equals 2x squared plus 3x plus c. Now, we've got an x squared, we've got an x, that's all fine. We've only got one letter term, which is x, but we've got this constant term. So if you've got a constant term, a plus c, that's not your particular solution. That's your general solution. Okay, now to work out 
your particular solution, you substitute in your values, right? So you substitute initial conditions into the equation sorry the general solution I should put rather than the equation to find C or to calculate C Right, so my initial condition is when x equals 1, y equals 4. Right? I'm just writing them at the side to remember them. You don't need to write them there, but I'm just going to do that. Right, So I'm substituting that into here. So 4 equals 2 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus c. Okay, so I'm just putting these into my general solution. So 4 equals 2 plus 3 plus c so 4 equals 5 plus c so move the 5 over so that means that c is negative 1 right so I've worked out my constant term so that gives me my particular solution for this question okay so my particular solution is y equals my general solution, which is this here. But now I know that c is negative 1, so I'm going to swap c for negative 1. So it's y equals 2x squared plus 3x take away 1. Right, then check. Does this answer work. Okay, so I've found my particular solution. Now there's no marks for checking your final answer. This is just hopefully so you can see what a differential equation is, right? So my original differential equation was dy by dx equals 4x plus 3. Right, that's my differential equation, right? That's what I started with. And I'm told the solution to that differential equation is this here. So does that make sense? If I differentiate this thing here, do I get this thing here? Yeah, I do. So that there is the solution to my differential equation, my particular solution. Okay, and there's loads of different direct integration ones. You, would, you should remember doing it in higher. I'm not going to bore you anymore with direct integration examples. Okay, so we're going to go on to the, the first proper type of uh, first order differential equation that we do in this course, and that is called separable variable. Separable variable. You may also see this as using separation of variables. It means the same thing. You're just separating your x's and your y's. Right now, the four you've got to be able to identify what type of differential equation is being given to you in the question. So the form is important. So the form of your separable variable one is dy by dx equals a function of x multiplied by a function of y. Okay? So dy by dx equals a function of x multiplied by a function of y. Okay? That's what it looks like. Or dy by dx is 
a function of x divided by a function of y. Okay, so it just means the same thing. So it's either a function of x multiplied by a function of y or a function of x divided by a function of y. Or, or it could be the other way around, right? As long as they're multiplying together and the, it, they're either multiplying together or they've got an fx on the top and a, a function of x on top or a function of y on the bottom or a function of y on the top and a function of x on the bottom. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean by that. Right now, in order to do this, we need to use rules of logs. And we need to use rules of logs back from engineering one. So maybe, so go back and look at your rules of logs maybe from engineering one. Have a look at some rules online. You've done it in higher as well, logs. It shouldn't be any different to you, right? Example one. So we're all going to be looking at finding the general solutions right now. So these are all going to have a constant term in it. Now, the constant term is quite, it's relatively important what you do with the constant term. And that's where our rules of logs come in. So find the general solution to the differential equation dy by dx equals x. Right, so straight away I can tell it's a separation of variable or a separable variable differential equation because I've got something with an x multiplying something with a y. So as soon as I see that, it's separation of variables. Now, what you always want to do is take the y terms to the left hand side, right? Because that's where your dy by dx, sorry, your dy is on the top. And you want to either move or keep all your x terms on the right hand side, right? So the y terms always stay in this, it's the one that's on the top always stays in the left hand side and the one that's on the bottom always moves over to the other side, that's how you can tell, right? So I need to move this y over to that side, so that's going to give me 1 over y dy equals, and I'm going to move that dx over x dx, right? So can you see how a set it separated the variables. I've now got all the y's on this side and all the x's on the other side. And you can only move things between each side of the differential equation using multiply because your dy and your dx has to multiply everything on this side and has to multiply everything on this side or it doesn't work. Right, so I want to know what y is. I want my final answer to look like y equals something if I can. If I can't, I can't, but let's, so I integrate both sides, okay, right now, this one I'm integrating with respect to y because it says dy, this one I'm integrating with respect to x because it says dx, so if I integrate 1 over y with respect to y, it gives me ln y. You don't write that as y to the power of negative 1 and then do that. That's not what we do. Right? And if we integrate x, we get x squared over to plus c. Remember your plus c. Now, you don't get a constant in this side. We only put a constant on the right-hand side. Because remember, constant is just a number. If we put a number on both sides, it defeats the purpose. So always just put your constant. on the right hand side. Right, now this is where things become a wee bit tricky. Right now, I want my final answer to look like y equals something. So, I want to get rid of this ln. So remember what we did in engineering maths one was we decided, right, I need to take the exponential of both sides like that 
Because remember, you can do that if there's nothing before the LN. If there's something before the LN, you go to do other stuff. But we don't have that. It's just something LN. Why? Okay. So. So the E and the LN cancel out. So I'm left with Y equals. And that's E to the power of X squared over 2 plus C. Now, now, we don't like the C being part of a power. The constant should never be part of a power. Like the constant should just always be a term that's on the, the normal line or the normal part of our solution. Right now, our rule here is that e to the power of a plus b is the same as e to the power of a times e to the power of b. Like that's a rule of indices from National 5. Right? So, what I could write that as is e to the power of x squared over 2 times e to the power of c. Right? But, remembering that c is just a constant, it's just a number. And e is just the number 2.71 and so on. So it's just a number 2. It's just a number as well. So, all I'm going to do is change this. Rather than calling it e to the c, I'm going to call it d. Okay. So that means that my final answer is y, or my general solution is d, d, e, to the x squared over 2. And that's my general solution to our differential equations. Hopefully you can see and a lot about the exponentials in there. Right, it's time for example number two. So obviously that's the general solution because I wasn't given one of those initial conditions. So we'll come on to those later on. So example number two. So this is exactly what I was saying. Now I want to find the particular solution. My writing is getting worse. I'm going to blame it on the tablet rather than on myself. In fact, let me rewrite that because that's an absolute nightmare. Let's just take the easy way out. So, we've got dy by dx equals x over y. And I'm getting, so I want a particular solution, which means I need an initial condition. So, my initial condition is going to be when x equals 5, y equals 10. Now, another way you might see that written as, is you might see that as written as y0 equals 10. No, not y0, sorry. Like that, I mean, that's y of 5 equals 10. And that means when x equals 5, y equals 10. Just a little word of advice. It's normally 0 in there, because as I said before, initial condition tends to be in this course. It's 0, but... Let's not worry too much about it. Right, so I know it's a separation of variables because we've got a function of x divided by a function of y. Again, probably the most easy differential equation that we've got. Right, now dy is on the top, so that means that y is going to go to this side. dx is on the bottom, so that means all my x's have got to go to this side. So let's bring that y up, so that becomes y dy. I'm just bringing that up to here. And dx up to here. So that equals x dx. 
And there you go, I've separated my variables. I've got all my y's on one side, all my x's on the other side. Everything's multiplying, everything's good. So that means I can take the integral of both sides. So if I integrate y by respect to y, it gives me y squared over 2. If I integrate x, it gives x squared over 2. Am I finished? No, I need my most important thing in the differential equation, my constant term plus c. Right, so what am I going to do next? Well, I want to make it y equals, so I'm going to move that 2 across. So y squared equals 2 times x squared over 2 plus and you would think, well, I'll multiply that c by 2 as well. But remember, c is just a number. So never really alter this constant by multiplying or anything like that. Just leave it the way it is. So I'm just going to leave that as plus c. So simplify that. So y squared equals x squared plus c. That means that y is equal to the square root of x squared plus c. And that is your general solution. Okay, there's no need to use uh, logs of exponentials here because when I integrated, I just ended up with two nice terms, no ln or anything like that. Right, but I want a particular solution. So I need to use these values here. So when x equals 5, y equals 10. Those are my initial conditions. So let's substitute those in. So 10 equals the square root of 5 squared plus c. Oh well, right. 10 equals the square root of 25 plus c. Right. What am I going to do next? Right, I need that c in there. I need it to be c equals. So I'm going to move that square root. So if I move that square root over to the other side of the equation, or if you think of doing the opposite, so if I'm going to move that over to there, it just becomes squared. So 10 squared equals 25 plus c. So 100 equals 25 plus c. So when I move that back over, that just gives me c equals 75. Right, so that means that our particular solution is y equals the square root of x squared plus, remember it's plus c, but I now know that c is 75. And that's my particular solution, or PS, as we can shorten it to. Right, I'm just going to do a whole lot of examples of these, and then I'm going to come to like a, a couple of exam type ones just to show you where it all comes into. Example three. Find the general So as you can see as we're doing this, it's all about decision making. Is our logs involved? Is there exponentials involved? Are they involved at all? Can I integrate that? Do I need to move things over to the other side of the equation? Do I need to substitute in the initial in the initial conditions? Do I not? So it's all about making these decisions, right? So my my uh, differential equation is dy by dx equals x cubed y. Right now, is it a direct integration or is it a separation of variables? So I get dy by dx on this side, but if it was direct integration, it would just be an x function on this side, but I've got an x function, x cubed, multiplied by a y. So it's separation of variables. Now, it's a general solution, so I don't need these initial conditions here. Right, 
So same thing again. I've got dy on the top, dx on the bottom. So that means that all my y's are going to be on the left hand side and all my x's are going to be on the right hand side. So I'm going to move that y over to this side and my dx over to this side. Right, so that y comes over and becomes a divide. So that becomes 1 over y dy equals x cubed dx. Right. So I've got only y's on this side, only x's on this side, so I'm now ready to integrate like that. Okay, let's integrate that. Now, again, don't be tempted to rewrite that as the integral of y to the power of negative 1 dx dy, sorry, because remember, that doesn't work, because if you were to integrate that, you'd increase the power by 1, y to the power of 0 divided by 0, and you can't divide by 0. So you should never ever do that with 1 over y or 1 over x. That's the reason why. Didn't mention that last time, but that's just your reason there. We know if we integrate 1 over y, it becomes ln y, and if we integrate that, it becomes x to the power of 4 over 4 plus c. Okay, this is roughly the same as that other one we had, example 1. Well, I've got my ln, there's nothing in front of it. So the easiest way to deal with that is just to go, right, I'm going to take the exponential of that side and the exponential of that side. So if you take the exponential of that side, that just gives me y equals e to the power of x to the power of 4, 4 plus c. But again, we're going to do that same thing. If you ever have the plus c up here, you just say let e to the power of c equal any letter. I normally let it be d. You'll see in some books you let it be k, because c and k, constant, whatever. I prefer d, because it's a nice number in alphabet. But hey. So it's d e to the power of x to the power of 4 over 4. And that's your chain solution. Let me just write it here. Your chain solution. G S. Exactly. Right. Let's keep going. Now they are going to get a little bit more tricky to a certain extent, but not massively. Right, and as I said, I want to get to the stage where I've, I've gone over what I would consider to be a exam example. Now, example four. Find the particular solution. Right, and my differential equation is dy by dx equals 1 plus y x cubed. When x equals 0, y equals 1. Right, so let's have a look at it. I've got a dy by dx and I've got a y and an x here. Now, this would be impossible if you didn't have the bracket around that y. Because your y function and your x function have to be multiplying. If there's a add or a subtract and it's not in part of a bracket, it's not multiplying, so separation of variables will not work. Right, so same thing. I've got dy on the top, dx on the bottom, so that means all my y's need to come to this side, and my dx's have to go on the other side. So I'm going to take this 1 plus y across, so that's going to be 1 over 1 plus, oh, 1 plus y dy equals x cubed dx. Right, so I've just done the exact same thing as I've done in all the previous examples so far. Right, all y is this side, all x is this side, so I'm ready to integrate. Okay, now 
this here again is logarithmic integration because if you differentiate the bottom you get the number on the top so that's ln 1 plus y equals x to the power of 4 over 4 plus c so again that's roughly similar to what I had in the last example now so I've got ln of something I want rid of the ln because I'll finally want I want my final solutions look like y equals something Right, that's the dream. So, I'm going to take the exponential of both sides. I'm not doing a different colour this time, I'll just do it there. Right, so that means that 1 plus y, because that the e and the ln cancel each other out, is e to the power of x to the power of 4 over 4 plus c. Right, let's sort this bit out here. Right, as I've always said before, if you've got the constant in there, what you can see is let e to the power of c be this new constant d. And then 1 plus y equals d e to the power of x to the power of 4 over 4. Nearly finished. It's not y equals yet, so I need to move the 1 over. So y equals d e to the power of x over 4 take away 1. And that's your general solution sorted for you there. Right, now, it's not the general solution I'm looking for, which is asking for the particular solution. So let's have a look at our initial conditions. When x equals 0, y equals 1. So we're going to substitute that into this differential equation and see what happens, right? So y equals, sorry, no, it's not. 1 equals d e to the power of 0 to the power of 4 over 4 take away 1. Right. So 1 equals d e to the power of 0 take away 1. Now, key thing, e to the power of 0 is 1, not 0. So that means that 1 equals d take away 1. So we're going to move that over to d is 2. So that means your particular solution. This time, all we're doing is we're swapping d into this equation. And there we go. That's our particular solution. Right now, there's a few in the a few in the workbook that I've put online that you could try, but I am. Um, in fact, I want you to try this one here, and I'll put the answer up. So, question. Find the particular solution. Okay, so dy by dx equals 6x, y plus 1 when x equals 0, y equals 8. Okay, so I want you to try it. Stop, pause the video there. Try that question for yourself. Right, so the solution, I'm not going to go through it, try it yourself, i is my final answer, I got y equals 4e to the power of 3x squared, take away 1. So try that one yourself, and also have a look at the separable variable ones in the booklet. Right, last or second last example, example five.
find the general solution. And this is a toughie. Because this is when we're putting a whole lot of our maths together. That is not how you spell solution. Right. So we've got dy by dx. y squared over 2x plus 1. Right, so let's think about this. I've got a fraction. I've got either the y's, I've got the y's and the x's on different parts of the fraction. So that's separation of variables. Now, the dy is on the top, the dx is on the bottom. So this is going to be my y side. This is going to be my x side. And that's always pretty much going to be the case. So that's bring that y squared over. So that's going to be 1 over y squared dy equals, well, that's in the bottom, so it's staying on the bottom. 1 over 2x plus 1 dx. Right, so that's on the top on this side. So when it moves over, it goes on to the bottom. So you need to put it 1 over. It's on the bottom on this side, so I can't do anything with it. So it has to stay as 1 over 2x plus 1. So I've separated the variables. All the y's are on one side. All the x's are on another side. So it's time to integrate. Right. Now, here's an issue. How do I integrate these two things? Now, this goes back to engineering math 3. And you need to remember how to do all these things. So... That's not ln y squared. Don't even think about doing that. Remember, if that power is anything other than 1, we rewrite that as y to the power of negative 2 dy. Right. Next bit. I'm using logarithmic. I know I need to use logarithmic integration because I know it's a power of 1 on the bottom. Right. But. Logarithmic integration works because the derivative of the of the bottom is what you get on the top. So if you differentiate 2x plus 1, right, because remember, ln y is equal to dy by dx over y, right? That's the formula for logarithmic integration. Right, so if I differentiate my y, which is 2x plus 1, I get 2. So I need that to be 2 over 2x plus 1 in order for me to use this formula here. Right, because the derivative of the bottom has to be the term on the top, and then you can write it as ln y. So if I differentiate that bottom bit, I get 2, so that means I need 2 on the top. Right, which means I need to take a factor out here. So a half multiplied by 2 gives me the one I started with. Okay, so let's integrate that. So that becomes y to the power of negative 1 over negative 1. And that becomes a half ln 2x plus 1 plus c. Right, so does that couple of wee weird integration things here, but nothing's been terrible so far. Right. I remember, I want this to be y equals something. So now we're going to have to use all of our knowledge of um, transposing formulas and all that kind of stuff. Right. Now, if the ln term is on this side and this side only. What I do is I create, I want to absorb that into the natural log, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this the way it is just now. So if you get one log term on the right hand side, you want to make all of your terms log terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, rather than having C, I'm going to call that ln D. Okay. Right. 
Again, remember if you still have number, an LN, doing an LN of something keeps it as a number. Natural log of something keeps it as a number. Right. So what that allows us to do is absorb that capital D into here. Like that. Right. Now, got another issue. So that's half that I don't really like. But my rules of logs are if I've got a number in front of my log, I can just move that up and make it the power. In fact, hold on, I'm gonna go back. Can't do that. Do you wanna get to here? This, right, I can't absorb the I can't put the D inside here yet because there's a number of the outside. You can only put two log functions together if there's no numbers on the outside of them. I just went a step. Do it quickly there. Right. So first thing I've got to do, let's make this make sense this time, is I've got to move that half up. Because if there's a coefficient in front of either of your LNs, you can't combine them together. We learned that in engineering maths one and I've forgotten it today. Oh well. Right. Now we can absorb the constant term inside. Like that. Right, so we're nearly there. So I'm going to move that over, and if I move that over, it becomes negative. So this is going to be negative ln d 2x plus 1 to the power of a half, like that. Right, so I'm nearly there. I want it to be y equals so. So remember that means 1 over y. Like that. So all I need to do to flip that over is just to flip them both. So that's going to be negative 1 over ln d 2x plus 1 to the power of a half. And that's my general solution to that differential equation. Now that is really, really tricky. So don't worry too much about that one, right? But remembering if you've got an ln on the left-hand side, you take e of both sides, and you let uh, e to the power of c be the constant d. If you've got the log term on the right-hand side, then you let the constant become ln d. Just like I've done in this example here. And don't make a mistake when you're combining your two logs to terms together like I did. Because what I did before was rubbish. And lastly, example six. Find a particular solution. To dy by dx equals y plus 4 over x plus 8. But what do I need? I need initial conditions. So my initial conditions are when x equals 1, y equals 4. Right? Okay. So it's definitely a separation of variables question because you've got the y's and x's on different parts of your fraction. So my y is on the my dy is on the top, my dx is on the bottom, so that means all my y's are on this side, all my x's are on that side. So 1 over y plus 4 dy equals 1 over x plus 8 dx. And now I've separated them. So I've got all the y's on one side, all the x's on the other side. And I can integrate. 
Okay, so this is ln integration because if I differentiate y plus 4, I get 1. So that's ln y plus 4. Same on this side. If I integrate that, well, if I differentiate that, I get 1. Okay, so that's just ln x plus 8 plus c. Okay, now this is the same case as we've just had. The fact I've got ln and ln on the right hand side. If we've got a ln on the right hand side, then what we do is we just make that ln t. Okay, so if your ln's uh, only on this side, you take the exponential of both sides. If you get ln on this side, you always just let c be ln d. Right. Right. Now, here's a trick. I can now merge these two ln terms together because there's no numbers in front of them. So let's do that. Because that was one of our main rules from logs in engineer maths 1 and in higher maths. So it's something you should know well. Right, now, what we know is, there's two ways of thinking about this. Once you've got only one log term on each side of an equation, and there's nothing else at the end, there's no numbers in front of the LNs, you can take the e, either the E of both sides, or you can think about it as you peel the logs away. Right, whatever you want to think about it as. I'm going to take the E of both sides. So if we do that, these two things cancel off, these two things cancel off, so y plus 4 equals d multiplied by x plus 8. I'm nearly there, I need it to be y equals, so I'm going to move the 4 over and it becomes a subtract, just like that. So that's, there we go, that's my general solution. Then ask me for the general solution, it asked me for the particular solution. So I need to go up and find my initial condition. So my initial condition was when x equals 1, y equals 4. So let's substitute those in. So 1 equals d4 plus 8 take away 4. Close enough. Then I need to solve this. So 1 equals 4 plus 8 is 12, so that's 12 d take away 4. Oh, I've put the numbers on wrong. It's when x equals 1, y equals 4, I've put them around the wrong way. Oops. Right, so 4, it's been a long day. D, 1 plus 8, take away 4. Right, so 4, 1 plus 8 is 9, so it's 9D, take away 4. Move that across, so 8 equals 9D. That means that d is 8 over 9. So your particular solution is y equals 8 ninths x plus 8 take away 4. And if you really want you can multiply all this nonsense out and get your final answer. If it works for you. Makes it easier, I don't know. You can if you want. If that's a whole number, then I would do it. If that was 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something like that, I'd multiply it out because it'll make it an easier uh, looking uh, function. But I'm fairly happy leaving it like that. So be careful, make sure you know how to do ones like that one there. Um, I've got one, I've got two last things to do. I've got to do transformation type differential equations, which involve turning more difficult looking differential equations into one of these separation of variable types. And then lastly, I've got to do the integrating factor. An integrating factor is great because it's loads of marks for not that much work. So, Hope everyone's well. If you've got any questions, please let me know. And I'll try and do some revision lectures because I know you've been really, you've been doing a lot of work for your graded, for your
project and your graded unit and all that kind of stuff. So I'll do everything I can to give you as much revision stuff as possible.